Returning samples from Mars would yield huge payoffs, but with a huge price tag and a long timeline, neither of which is acceptable to NASA. Now NASA has put out a call for out-of-the-box ideas to save the mission. On this episode of Mars Guy, Perseverance has been slowly collecting carefully selected and documented samples for more than three years with the intent that they be returned to Earth, a first for Mars exploration. It's only here that they can be analyzed with instruments and machines that simply can't be sent to Mars and others that haven't even been built yet. The results will likely revolutionize our understanding of Mars and how it compares to Earth and the rest of the solar system. We may even find the first evidence of life on another world. The complex plan for how to do it, referred to as mission architecture, has been evolving for many years. The current architecture has Perseverance delivering its onboard collection of samples, which are tightly sealed inside tubes, to a lander that would arrive on Mars several years from now. That lander would need to be the biggest one ever sent to Mars. Here's Mars Guy for scale. That's because it's carrying a rocket and the largest array of solar panels ever sent to the surface, which are needed for the power to maintain the rocket. The sample tubes would be dropped off by Perseverance in reach of a robotic arm built by the European Space Agency. That arm has the task of grabbing the tube off the ground in whatever orientation it lands. Then it places the tube in a docking station so that the arm can reorient in a way that allows it to grip the tube in what's referred to as the glove. This allows the arm to place the tube into a container at the top of the rocket and then release the glove, which at this point is just needless extra mass. After doing this operation on 30 or more tubes, the sample container, known as the orbiting sample or OSS, is closed up to prepare for its launch to space. That happens when the rocket is flung out of the lander in what's referred to as a cold launch, then ignited while in the air. This is a common strategy for launching missiles, although this missile has two stages. Once in orbit, the roughly basketball-sized OS would be released from the rocket. This unpowered miniature spacecraft has to be located by the ESA-built Earth return orbiter without any radio link between the two. After docking, the OS goes into the capture, containment, and return system built by NASA, which breaks the chain between Mars and Earth by encapsulating the OS in hardware that was never on Mars. This is a planetary protection protocol. After months of travel back to Earth, the CCRS would be released to follow a direct trajectory into Earth's atmosphere, which slows it down just enough to allow a survivable hard landing in a desert in the American state of Utah. NASA chartered an independent review board last year to look at the costs and other aspects of this complicated and audacious architecture. They concluded that it would require eight to $11 billion spread across many years with sample return in 2040. NASA assembled an internal team to review the board's report and respond to its recommendations. That team agreed with the budget and schedule realities of the board's report. Faced with this situation, Last week, NASA announced that neither the costs nor schedule are acceptable. Therefore, in order to inform um, the MSR mission design, uh, we want to try and reduce complexity, schedule, and cost. Um, I have directed uh, SMD to explore out-of-the-box architectures and mission element options. And so um, we will be releasing a competitive solicitation uh, tomorrow um, for funded industry studies to investigate either the innovative and alternate MSR architectures or, um, or and or innovative and alternative architecture elements such as. But given that the team already interviewed roughly 70 experts and analyzed about 20 architecture variations, the potential to come up with better solutions seems grim. So faced with long odds and limited time, NASA appears to have taken a page from the playbook 
of American football and throwing a Hail Mary pass.